So what I wanna do in the next few minutes is just walk through a little bit of what the speaker said on last night and just make sure that we're all on the same page, basically taking a nice bow and tying it and making sure that we leave understanding what we heard. So first and foremost, let's define leadership. Leadership is the stewardship. It's not an ownership, it's a stewardship of one's God-given gifts. God gave it to you. Your gifts, your abilities, your opportunities. Leaders seek to influence and serve others. That's what it is. Leadership is influence, leadership is service. So that's how we define leadership. So when you're sitting there and say you're going to an employer, an employer looks at your resume, college students and high school students and says, hey, I see that you were an RA or I see that you were the SGA president. So that's a leadership position. What's your definition of leadership? And you just look there at them and you're like, I don't know. Now you have something to look at him and say, well, sir, ma'am, I believe that leadership is a stewardship. This job that you're gonna give me or maybe allow me to have, I wanna steward that. I wanna make the most of it. I want to build it up. I also believe that this job or this opportunity that you're gonna give me is influence. I don't wanna be a little spectator here. I wanna be a participant. I wanna be giving suggestions. I wanna be giving, um, being an honest critic in, uh, in private and a raving fan in public. I wanna be that way. And guess what? I'm gonna serve. I'm gonna show up. I'm gonna do my job. I'm gonna pay attention to details. And if you could give that definition, not only will you probably get the job, you have the gospel opportunity right then and there. Because you remember a couple, last year from this stage, we heard a message from the guy who runs the International Missions Board of the Southern Baptist. And he told a story about a young lady who is a nurse in a country that he couldn't even name. And he says, she is so good at her job that people come to her and they allow her to have Bible studies in a country that that's not even allowed because she's that good at her job. So leadership, it's stewardship, it's influence, it's service. So let me give you some things that uh, General Reno, uh, Dr. DeWitt, Dr. Wood, and Dr. Kimball said last night. They did a fantastic job. And if you could help me, college students, if you could send them an email just saying thank you, they've given up so much of their time. A thank you to the great breakout session speakers today. That would be greatly appreciated. So let's go through, starting with self-leadership. Leaders fall short when they lose sight of God. So if you're gonna be a leader, which I believe you are, and you don't keep your eyes on God, you're gonna fall short. Leaders take things up the chain of command, not down the chain of command. When you hear a three-star general say that, you're like, okay, I get it, he's done it, he understands that. One of the things about General Reno, he's one of the most humble men I've ever met in my life. And he said this, leaders get on their knees. Don't stop praying, don't stop praying. Dr. DeWitt was talking about who is influencing you. And he said this, invest your life. Your life is a gift from God. He said this, who, will, who you allow to influence you will set the trajectory of your life. If you're hanging out with losers, you can't expect to be a great person. All right, so stop hanging out with the people you shouldn't hang out with. I got a 10 year old son now, and he's got a couple friends at school that he talks about, man, they make fun of the teacher, they do this, they're mean to me, and I look at him, I go, Keegan, why are you hanging out with them? I don't know. I mean, stop hanging out with people that are mean. He, he came home the other day in tears, he said, somebody called me mean the other day. I go, who'd you, who'd you hang out with on the playground? Well, these two kids, and like, well, dude, you're hanging out with mean people. Of course they're gonna think you're mean. I go, there's other good people there. Who you allow to influence you sets that trajectory. And, and Dr. DeWitt really did this and he redefined mentor last night, remember? So I'm sure he's put that into a, uh, to Star Wars or wherever he's gonna go. Um, a mentor is an investment advisor. My dad's a financial planner, a financial advisor, and he looks at everybody's money and does all that stuff. But a mentor is an investment advisor. So lean in. Listen up, look out. Then you go to what Dr. Wood talked about in team leadership, and he gave us those three things. Number one, a team leader, people who are willing to lead. Sometimes you will not be sitting in the boss's chair, but there could come a time that the boss gets sick and you are called on to be the boss or the captain or the leader. Are you willing to lead? Are you ready to lead? He talked about healthy teams. I know Parker, our SGA chaplain, talked about the, the uh, 1980 hockey team. None of you were alive, I get that, I'm okay with that. I was seven years old and my dad allowed me to watch the night, stay up and watch the Olympic finals, the 1980 hockey team, The Miracle on Ice. It's a Disney movie. And Herb Brooks, who was the coach there, 
was trying to take this team and make them into a team. And at the beginning, he picks this team and the people who are around him go, what is wrong with you, dude? There's not a, the good players aren't on here. And he said this comment, I'm not looking for the good players. I'm looking for the right players. And then he kept them going and they weren't learning. And there was a game overseas and they just weren't getting it. And in the movie, it's perfect. He gets them on the line. They had just tied a, a, um, a team that they should have beat. And he gets them on the line and he makes them skate and skate and skate and skate and skate and skate. And at the end, they're all about ready to die. And one of the guys is, he says, he gets ready to say again. And the guy looks at him. He says, okay, my name is this. Who do you play for? They used to say, well, I used to play for the University of Minnesota or the University of Boston or the University of Massachusetts. And he goes, I play for the USA. And what he was trying to get to is the name on the front of the jersey is a lot more important than the name on the back. The idea that identity, your identity in the team needs to be greater than your personality and your skills. You are not all in all. Can I tell you something? If you're on a team, the team could survive without you. Well, I'm the best player. The team would survive without you. Cedarville would survive without me. Realize that, understand that. What makes a healthy team? John said this, clear communication, trusting environment, healthy conflict. None of us like to fight, but why not? Why do we always have to agree just to be peaceful? We can disagree. We can have fights in private and we can have good opinions so we can serve better as a team. Commitment to unity and accountability. I put down, we need to be real. The world needs healthy teams, not just teams that exist. So if you're gonna be on a team, be on a healthy team. And then John ended with a team member. Be a team member, not just a member of a team. Do you get the difference? Be a team member, be a team player, not just somebody that's on the team. Are you there for the team or is the team, are you, or are you there just to get something out of the team? Is it like, I'm on this team, I wanna be part of SGA, I wanna be part of the RA group, I wanna be, a, I wanna be on SCAB, I wanna be whatever you wanna be, I wanna be a CEO one day. Are you there because what you can get or what you can give? Characteristics of a team member, they're humble, they're hardworking, and they're helpful. Dr. Kimball end with, who are you influencing? Uh, his book, J. Oswald Sanders, Spiritual Leadership. If you've not read it, I encourage you to read it. It says, leadership is influence, nothing more, nothing less. It's all about influence, it's not a position. Dr. Kimball said this, and it was really convicting. If your abilities outpace your character, you will not be in leadership. Then he gave us these five things about influencing others. Share God's word. Share your life. Exhibit sacrificial love. Not just when it's easy to love somebody. Love people that it's hard to love. Have good character. He actually said exemplary character. And then have courage. So when I heard all that stuff last night and I found out that, okay, I gotta wrap this up. I said, okay, those are some great things, but now how do we do it? How do we lead? Can I give you something? I'm gonna give you a common purpose or a rally cry. John Wood mentioned the movie Hoosiers. I grew up in Indiana. I love the movie Hoosiers. I grew up in a small town, went to a small Christian high school, actually played on a basketball team, 12th guy on the basketball team, but I played on that basketball team. And that basketball team won the national championship my senior year. If you're here from Brownsburg, Indiana, I went to Bethesda Christian. And so I, my team won that tournament and I think I got in for 30 seconds, but I got in the game. So I, I'm a national champion. I feel pretty good about that. Um, but you know, one thing about the movie Hoosiers, he mentioned the movie Rudy. I also love Notre Dame football. You know why I love Notre Dame football? Because Indiana can't play football. We stink. My dad walked on the Indiana football team and he loves Indiana football and they still stink. I don't know why I told you that. Nobody tell my dad that I told him his team stinks. But one thing about Notre Dame football, it's all about tradition. If you've ever seen the movie Hoosier, they walk down the tunnel, there's a sign, play like a champion today, they smack it. They walk down another part of the tunnel, they smack the sign again. It's all about tradition. They know what they're going to do. So I wanna give you this about how to live out what we've just heard, and it's called own it. How can you own it? So when it comes to stewardship, how can you own it? Let me give you these few things. Open to change and growth. Never, never, never stop learning. Don't stop learning. I'm 43 years old and I feel, feel like I learned more today than I did when I was a kid. I was a terrible college student. 
I don't know how in the world Cedarville hired me. If they looked at my transcript now, they'd be like, what, you're in higher education? When I got into my master's work, I had to write a letter saying, hey, I'm not as dumb as my transcripts really say I am. I can do the work, never stop learning. The W, wrestle with ideas and concepts. It means this, I think it means to think, to dream, to seek clarity, meaning don't wait for things to be clear. If your boss or your parents or people are not clear, it's not up to them to pro provide all this clarity for you. It is your job to say, I don't understand. Help me understand this. When my staff comes in and goes, Brian, I know you made this decision. I get it, but I don't understand it. Can we talk about it? I appreciate that. I don't want just yes people. I want people who seek clarity. So wrestle with ideas and concepts. Never compromise the important. I put this down and this comes from what we heard last night. God's holiness, your integrity. If you violate your integrity, it, it's impossible to get it back. Don't, don't put your integrity out there and say, I'm gonna let that go because I want this promotion. I'm gonna let my integrity go so that I can be liked. No, your integrity, your character, it's about team. Don't forget that you're a member of a team. And I said, your identity. Your identity is, should be greater than your personality and skills. Meaning your identity in Christ is more important than who Christ made you to be and the gifts that he's given you. Your identity in the team is greater than what you can bring to the team because without the team, you are nothing. Imagine if a church practiced this, if families practiced this. Don't compare yourself. Never compromise important, don't compare yourself. Comparison is the thief of joy. Don't compare yourself. God created you to be you, Psalms 139. When I was growing up, I compared myself to other people. Man, I would be a lot more happy if I was like the seventh person on the basketball team and not the 12th. I'd be a lot more happy if I was the B student and not the C student. Don't compare yourself. The I, involve others. You cannot do it alone. I love to say this. I, none of us live in a vacuum, play in a vacuum, work in a vacuum. We all rely on other people. God created us to live in community. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. And it talks about that. When you look at Genesis 1, it talks about the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit. The idea that God has been in community from eternity past to present and to eternity future. So we need to live in community. The last one, total commitment. Kristen is here. And uh, one thing, she, even before she was hired on SCAB when I, back a long time ago, I love the Disney company. I had the opportunity, Cedarville sent me to the Disney Institute to study and I love it, I loved it. And one of the things when I was reading the Disney books was that if, how many people been to Disney, Magic Kingdom at Disney World? How many people remember the carousel? Right there in the middle? Do you know there's 23 karat gold paint on that car a carousel? It's not just gold color, it's gold paint. And you're like, none of the guests would ever know that. Why do they do that? Because Disney knows that they pay fantastic attention to detail. Not only does it help the guest experience, it helps the guest experience because the staff or the cast members know that they pay that close of attention to detail. Pay attention to details. Don't cut corners. The little details matter. You know, don't do it. There's a couple of sayings I wanna give you. Wherever you are, be all there. If you're here in this room, be all here. When I try to be in a meeting with students or with, even with my family, when I'm there, I gotta be all there. There's all these distractions in the world, but be all there. And then this one from Jim Elliott, Jim Elliott, God forgive me for being so ordinary and claiming to know an extraordinary God. Be totally committed. So to wrap this all up, why do we lead? It's God's calling. As Christ followers, you don't have an option because you will influence. And our job is to reflect the beauty of Christ. Every day, my job is to reflect the beauty of Christ. So when I go out to eat with my staff this afternoon, if I don't reflect, if we don't reflect the body of Christ or the, the beauty of Christ, we're missing an opportunity to share the gospel with somebody. What is leadership? It's stewardship, it's not an ownership. It's influence, so who, who is influencing you? 
And who are you influencing? It's service. Do you know that service should be your default action? It shouldn't be about what you get, but about what you give. And then how do I lead? You own it. Go back, high school students, you own it. College students, own it. You're with your friends, you you just own it. So what I wanna do right now in conclusion, I'm gonna have my two two of my friends come up, uh, Jonathan and Brooke. Jonathan is our senior class president and Brooke serves as our our, um, vice president. I almost made her the president, Rob, I'm sorry. Um, But what we wanna do right now, because this is important, I want them to pray over you from a student perspective, student to student, because we can't do this without God's help. It's not easy, but it's a privilege and it's your responsibility, so own it. A closing reminder, be sure to like these social media sources. I think they're gonna go back up on the screen. Stay connected, great leaders grow. Uh, Kim Blanchard wrote a book called that. And then uh, a second thought, uh, nobody cares what you know until they know that you care. And so let that be our prayer, let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, I just pray that you would help us to love people the way you love people, that you would help us to treat people the way that Jesus would treat people. And I pray that through that interaction that we have with people, that as we go out and we interact and we care for the people that we're working with, for the people that we're going to school with, that when they see that we care, that we would have an opportunity to share uh, your word with them. God, I pray that we would take the things that we learned this weekend at this leadership conference and we would not be haughty, we would not be built up in ourselves, God, but we would be humbled by how much we still have to to grow. God, but we would be empowered by your spirit to go and lead uh, to make a difference for your kingdom in the world. Dear Lord, you are so good um, and perfect, and we are so honored to be here today just to learn more about what it means to be a godly leader, God, and to place our identity in you and to go out and lead and serve in your name, God. Um, I just pray for these students here that you will just give them this passion and this desire to know who you are, to live out their identity in you, and to love and influence others, no matter what leadership position they're in, God. Just thank you so much for this opportunity, uh, just to learn more about you and how to be better leaders, God. Um, I just, I plead with you, I beg that you just give us this desire and this passion to know your word and to know you better, Lord, um, in all areas of our life. Lord, we love you so much, and I just pray that we will learn to love and know you more. I pray all these things in your son's precious name. Amen. Thank you guys for coming. You're dismissed.